When it comes to the renewable energy industry, storage of energy is one of the most difficult puzzles to solve. After all, energy is not just a physical thing we can pick up and chuck in a storage container. When we shift the discussion to the colossal amounts of energy produced by wind turbines and solar farms, storing generated energy gets more and more difficult. But you may be wondering why we need to store energy in the first place. Well, to put it simply, it is because our consumption of energy is not constant and varies a lot throughout the day. In the daytime, when everyone is awake, making their dinner, watching TV and having hot showers, the average household consumption is about twice what it is in the same household at night. Because of this, we want to store excess generated energy at night when demand is low to be able to use it in the daytime when demand is high. Okay, that's great. But how do we do this? We already know how to store energy, right? We have batteries and capacitors, we just need to make them bigger. Well, as you can imagine, it's not that easy. To show this, let's see what would happen if we wanted to use a lithium-ion battery for the job. Let's say, to store the energy that one wind turbine produces in one day. The Vestas V100 2 MW turbine is the one we're going to use for this example, which actually has a lower power output compared to its 4 MW big sister. The rated power of this turbine is 2000 kilowatts, and we can expect a turbine like this to be about 50% efficient. This gives us a daily energy output of 24,000 kilowatt hours, which is the energy we're going to have to store within our lithium ion battery. Spoilers, it's going to have to be a pretty big one. The average energy storage density of a lithium ion battery is 0.2 kilowatt hours per kilogram, meaning that our battery would weigh about 120 tons. Okay, so it would be massive, but how much would it cost? Well, we can model the average price of a cylindrical battery cell to be about $110 per kilowatt hour of energy storage. And so, through some simple calculations, we can show that our battery would cost around $24.6 million to produce. And this is just to be able to store the daily energy generated of one turbine. So clearly, this is not a good option. This is where gravity batteries come in, which use gravitational potential energy as storage. The most common form of gravity battery is called pumped storage hydroelectricity. The concept behind it is rather simple. You have two reservoirs, one lower than the other, and excess energy can be used to pump water from the lower reservoir up into the higher one. When energy demand is high and supply is low, the water can be allowed to flow back down to the lower reservoir and turn a water turbine as it does so to generate electricity. However, these hydro pump systems are expensive to implement and require you to have a lake nearby or other similar water supplies in order for it to work. So let's look at some other options. An alternative option is explored by the company Energy Vault. By constructing a concrete tower with multiple cranes at the top, energy can be stored by placing the blocks at the top of the tower. In the face of increasing energy demand, these blocks can be lowered back down to the ground and turn a generator in the crane as they do so. So, can this solve the energy storage problem? Well, not really. You see, as the channel Adam Something has discussed in his own video, which I will link in the description, Energy Vault's idea seems to be heavily flawed. To begin with, the production of concrete required for the structure alone would emit about 82,000 tons of CO2 into the atmosphere, which is quite a lot. In fact, it's about the same emissions as 82 flights from London to New York and back. Furthermore, trying to stack concrete blocks on the ground with high precision would be very, very difficult as soon as a bit of wind picks up. To make matters worse, Energy Vault had described the energy storage capacity of their system to be about 35 megawatt hours. As we saw earlier, the daily energy generated by just one wind turbine is about 24 megawatt hours, so we would need about two of these towers per three wind turbines, which is not ideal. Let's turn our attention to a different but in some ways similar project, led by the company Gravitricity. Gravitricity are aiming to achieve similar functionality using up to 24,000 tons in weights that are suspended in deep 300 meter underground vertical shafts. What is nice about this project is that it will reuse abandoned coal mines to suspend its weights and store energy in an eco-friendly way. Quite symbolic I'd say, out with the old coal mines and in with the new. Its first project is beginning this year in the Czech Republic, so it's exciting to see how its efforts will unfold. What is perhaps most impressive about this system is its efficiency and response time. In operation, 
the system is expected to reach efficiencies between 80 and 90 percent, and it has an exceptionally long lifespan of about 25 years without any loss in performance. Furthermore, it is able to output full power in less than one second, meaning that it is a reliable source in the face of emergencies where energy is required immediately. Also, if more energy storage is required, more weight can just be added to the system to increase the storage capacity available. It's exciting to see innovations emerging when tackling the issue of energy storage, and I'm keen to see whether this year proves successful for Gravitricity's initial project. If so, they could hold the key to solve the energy storage issue once and for all. So tell me, what do you think is the best way to solve the issue of energy storage? Let me know in the comments. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to my channel or just dropping a like. Renewable energy is the sector I hope to work in one day in the future and all of your help is much appreciated. I also have a blog where I write about all the topics I talk about in my videos and I will link that in the description below. With that being said, thank you very much for watching.